This is Flux Context. It's basically an AI image editor and generator on steroids. Feed it a photo or a drawing, and it locks onto it like an instant Laura and spits out variations that actually stay consistent, almost like it was a specifically trained Laura. But it does far more than that, especially in the photo or image editing. You want to change the outfit? Easy. Swap the art style? No problem. Remove stuff like editing your X out of a photo? It's got you covered. Need to add in some new stuff to make up for that lack of an X in the photo? It's got you. And yeah, the little guy with the signs, all those poses and texts that he had on that sign came from context using just this one image as the input. It runs local and comfy, it's pretty fast if you have the right equipment, and it's scary good. I'll show you how to set it up and get into it step by step, and even how to use LoRa's with it. Alright, let's go. Alright, so you're going to open up your Comfy UI, and then if you haven't updated it to the most recent version of Comfy, go ahead and update it. If you have a specific reason for not updating, then create a new installation and update that installation. You come over to Workflows, Browse Templates, and come down to Flux, and you will see you have Flux Context Dev Basic and Flux Dev Context Group. We're going to be working with Basic. Go ahead and open that up, and bada bing, bada boom. It's got all of your needed things, and you can see my little uh, project I was working on earlier there. All the nodes are there, and it even gives you the links that you need to the files, the safe tensors, tensor, and the text encoders, the VAE, all this fun stuff. So you just click on the hyperlink, and it will open up your browser, and it will start downloading those. So you download the context model, you download the AE safe tensor, that's your VAE, and then you're going to need to download Clip, and then you can either download the FP8 or the FP16, or you can download them both. It's going to depend on your VRAM. The FP8 is around 4 gigs of VRAM, or 4 gigs, and the FP16 is around 9. Personally, I've been using the FP9, but either works. So you will download these, and it shows you your uh, where to put them right here, the Fusion models or in your UNet, depending on how you've done your setup, you can put your flux dev context fp8 scaled dot safe tensor into either your model folder or your unit folder. I have mine in my unit because I have multiple comfy installations. Either way works. Just put it in there. Your VAE is going to go into the VAE folder. Your clip L and your FP16 or FP8 is going to go into the text encoders folder. Very nice that it's got this information for you. Once you have that done, you can go ahead and load them up, and I'm actually going to go ahead and change this over to FP16. And that's all you got to do. It's now ready to rock. You just give it whatever you want, and it's ready to go. Now, for this first example, we're going to use the picture of this guy. Let's see, what do we want to do here? Let us change his, we're going to change his, I guess, jacket, maybe his shoes? All right, so you're going to come over to your prompt, and you're basically just going to tell it whatever you want to do. Try to be as specific as possible, as well as be specific in the things that you want to retain or change, if it's changing or retaining things you don't want. I will have a link to kind of uh, some other people's written guides about how to prompt for context. So we're going to say, change his black jacket to a red jacket I can't spell and change his shoes to let's do Nike Air Force I don't know how to spell this so don't judge Air Force one one shoes I I, I wish you would have auto or like a, some text correction in there if you mess up your spelling because I suck at spelling but it doesn't, so we'll see. And it is done, and look at that. It changed out his jacket for a red jacket, and I, I honestly really don't know much about shoes, but, I mean, I see the Nike logo. So you can do things like changing around your outfit or something. Um, you can also do something like changing art styles. Let me see if I have a good one here. Let's go with Zorro. And we will say... Change this image, or this, let's go with a drawing, to pixel art. Run. And ta-da! 
Now we have a pixel art version of the image, so you can change art styles. Um, we can also go ahead and do different things with giving it a character and adding things. So let me change over the character to my character, and we're going to say, give him a gun. He's point pointing at the viewer. It's a, it's America. What do you guys want? Come on, like everybody needs a gun here. But that art, pixel art, went really well. And ta-da! I now have a fancy gun in my hand. Not only do I have a gun in my hand, I'm also pointing at it. You can see it pretty much stays on point for my art style. So you can basically use it as a end-all, be-all Photoshop editor. Um, let's also change up a bit. So we have this up here, which is also purpled out, and we have this down here that's purpled out. But let's, uh, what do you do with this? So control B, ah! control B to turn it on. And what you would do here is you would plug this into where it says latent image. So you just drag this down here and plug that in. And then you can actually tell it specifically, maybe I want, maybe I want a couple batch counts. Maybe I want a different image size. Maybe let's see. Let's say I want a 768 by, I, I don't know, we'll do like 1408. This is not a good image size. But let's say we want to make a character sheet. And we're going to just basically tell this, if I can click this right, using the character and art style, make a character sheet. Run. Okay, this did not I mean it. It kind of followed through with what I wanted. Okay, I have just realized I am a monkey. Um, that is width. I meant to set this one to the big number. Sure, that's good. And 768 for height. Okay, that that should be a little more accurate for a character sheet. Let's try this again. Okay, here we go, guys. Much better. Uh, I don't quite understand why I've got Japanese or Chinese or whatever knees it's throwing in there, but it has given me a character sheet not as great as I would want. I would probably just throw this as an, in a image editor, pull out the specific characters, and kind of reshuffle it to a better, but then again, I also gave it a very odd image setting. All right, let us go ahead and reconnect the normal latent. And I'm going to hit Control B on that again. But that is how you can choose a custom image size. Now I'm going to show you how to use a LoRa with it. So you're going to come over to your nodes. You're going to go LoRa. I misspelled that. You want LoRa load model only. This is what you want. And you're going to put it between your model and your model and your case sampler. That's literally all you have to do is just throw it in there. All right, your, your load LoRa will be right there. You can adjust your model strength. Uh, you just click on this and it will give you your options. I only have one right now, which is this prism, last prism. Um, let me go ahead and pull up the trigger info. Okay, our trigger info is very simple. Make this object glass prism with reflections. Cool. And I'm going to change this if I can find the photo. Here it is. And we're gonna we're gonna try and see if we can use this Laura to change this apple into a glass apple. Let's see how it does. And ta-da! It worked. It actually looks like it worked on the both the apples. You can see our original right here. Two apples right there, and I went ahead and changed those into glass prisms. Um, at this time, since context is very new, there are very limited lures out there. I don't have much information I can give you guys on where to acquire a Laura, but or the training process, but that is just how you would add a Laura into this. And then you can also just remove the Laura if you don't want it in there. The other thing you could do is just set the Laura strength to like one. Can I not? Move the position of that. Okay, I guess I can't move that node. And that's uh, that's basically most of the important information. That's how to do a custom image size. So that's how to use a, a LoRa in it. And some of the some fun stuff you can do with it. Thanks for watching. Um, this was done on a 24 gigabyte 3090.
if this video gets enough views, I do have a laptop with a 3080 8GB in it that I can try and figure out how this works on low VRAM. But this is just how it works in a normal setting without having to chop it down to something smaller.